your expedition Get your expedition I Find out what you're missing on Get your expedition Have you ever been to a farm? Well, in this case, it's a garden. It's a huge, huge garden right in the middle of a city. And you know, the, the food that we get at the grocery stores, the fruits and vegetables, come from gardens just like this, or farms just like this. Now today, we're gonna see some really neat things like squash and some, oh, sweet potatoes, potatoes, cherry tomatoes, a lot of different types of tomatoes, even some mushrooms. We're gonna see a lot of different things. We're gonna have a great time at this farm or garden. Hey, you know what? Let's go see what the kids are doing. This is some Swiss chard that we've been working with some. And this is uh, our plants that are just coming up. And then we'll show you some more that are large and huge and beautiful. And I bet you guys know how to pick onions, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's go pick an onion. Okay. We've got some here. <laughs> Do you know that your sense of smell is so important in your eating and that you can actually um, put an onion under your nose and then eat an apple and what you will taste is more the onion than the apple. We're at Guilford Gardens. Cam, thank you so much for letting the kids come. They've been looking forward to this for a long time. Can you tell us what we're going to do today and what we're going to see? We are going to take a tour through the garden and we're going to dig some potatoes and we're going to see some squash and pick some squash. We're going to pick some tomatoes. We're going to see where the Swiss chard's from. Wow. We might even try a few um, uh, herbs here and there. And we're even going to pick some mushrooms and go into the hoop houses and the greenhouses as well. Uh -oh. We're going to have some fun. That's so cool because the garden's right here in the middle of the city. And it's a great place. And kids are going to have a great time. I, I, I'm having trouble holding them back. So thank you very much for letting us come today. It's been great. We're so excited to have you here. I'm just wondering, well, how do they grow out of the ground without the vines and everything? Like, we just found these in there. Yeah. Um, okay, so you take that, the sprout comes up just like this, yeah. and it grows above ground. These have been in for two and a half months, and so they've made a big plant. And then at this, what they're doing is making more roots, which is what the potatoes are, and then we eat the potatoes. So that it, it takes this little thing, this little thing right here becomes this big plant. They are actually a purple carrot. Who heard of a purple carrot as opposed to our orange carrots? Yeah. Twist. Okay. And so we've got, yep, twist. Is this a good one? Sure, you betcha. Yep, yeah. there you go. Yeah, this is a good one. And then, Sorry, yeah. Later. Oh yeah, yeah, just here, let me take, we'll take that off for you. And you just eat that, there you go. Eat it, eat it. They're really wonderful when they're that fresh. Feel free to pick them. Okay. Let's go. Right there. Yep, you've got one in there. And this is called the rainbow Swiss chard. Can you guys think of why they would call it a rainbow Swiss chard? Very good. Good job, Brian. Thank you. All right. So, and then they'll, but they'll keep producing, just like in the tomatoes, the vine, and, they, and the cucumbers yeah. are vines, and they keep producing. And the peppers. And the peppers keep producing, and these keep producing as well. And these are called blue oyster mushrooms. Isn't it kind of interesting that they grow out of the side? And this is just some uh, straw in here that's got what's called a mushroom spawn. And then it just uh, produces all the mushrooms right outside of it. The broccoli puts up a really big, beautiful crown. And then we have side shoots. Now this farm has asparagus, carrots, potatoes, and all of them are, are different, but then they kind of have a lot in common. Sophia, what do they have in common? Well, they they grow in rows, huh. they, and they all grow out of the ground. Rows, they grow in rows and then up out of the ground. I, I like that, I like that. Now, they're, they're all different, they taste different. What are some of the ways that we could cook it? Do you have any idea? Um, well, I guess you could grill asparagus, hmm. and you could also roast it in an oven. Grill it, roast it in an oven, okay. Mm. What do you think? You can steam carrots. Steam carrots, no, that's a hot idea, I like that. <laughs> no, Mr. Jeff. No. One more. Hmm. You got an idea? Yeah. You could bake and you could boil potatoes. Bake and boil potatoes. Boy, I am getting so hungry. How about you guys? Yeah. Oh, I love fresh vegetables. I love to cook them. Are you guys ready to cook? Yeah. All right, well, let's go cook. Yeah. Somebody gonna help me up? Yeah? 
That's that's just great. <laughs> You guys ready to cook? Yeah! All right, I'm ready to cook. Now we're right here at the Guilford Gardens in Oklahoma City in their kitchen. The gardens surround the house. They have a kitchen right in the middle. Now it may not be like your kitchen at home. It's a little bit different than mine. It's a beautiful kitchen, but it's still the same. We have the, the flat surface, the, the utensils, the sheet pans. We brought in a, a grill top that you could grill outside if you want to grill outside. We have ovens and a stove top. So today we're gonna to make asparagus. We're gonna grill it and then we're gonna roast it. And I think you're really gonna like it. Now this asparagus is purple, but once it's finished cooking, and you can tell that it's finished because it turns green, we're gonna do something very, very simple with the asparagus. Now the asparagus grows on a large stick and then you cut it, and then another one grows back and you cut it, and another one grows back. It's just really cool how neat that is. You just gotta keep cutting it all the time. It just takes a couple days and a few more are up. Now, what we're gonna do is coat it lightly with some vegetable oil. In that vegetable oil, we're gonna put some rosemary and some thyme, which are the herbs that we saw in the garden. And then we're gonna do pepper and salt, stir together, and you're gonna brush the asparagus. Part of them will go on this pan here, and it's gonna go in the oven. 375 degrees for about 20 minutes and the other part's going to go on the grill top here which is going to be really really good now there's a lot of neat things you can do with the asparagus but this is the, the simple thing you can also wrap it with prosciutto ham or bacon or something like that you can put a sauce on it but we're just going to eat it just very very simple now the thing that you want to be able to do and the first thing we do is this part of the asparagus is not it's kind of chewy the rest of it is delicious and so what we want to do is we hold it up like two fingers and then a thumb in the middle and it just snaps. So we will snap it and then we will put it on our pans and we will mix our, our mixture together and then we will brush it on top of it and then that goes in the oven and then that goes on the grill top and then we pull it out of the oven that's great and then we watch it turn green on the grill top. Are you guys ready to do that? Yeah! All right, let's start snapping, let's go. First we had a grill that Chef Jeff brought us we can use inside and out. So what we did is we snapped the asparagus, then we mixed thyme and rosemary and we put the salt and pepper in there. Then after that we coated the asparagus with, with that mixture. And then we'd either put it on the grill or the oven and maybe sprinkle a little bit more pepper and salt on it. All right, are you ready to eat? Here we go. Let's go. Mm. Mm. Cheers. Mm. Cheers. Hello, everybody. I'm Yannick. And I'm Nola. We're here in our Kitchen Expedition Studios and we're talking about the wild world of perennials. Nola, do you know what perennials are? No, Yannick, I don't, but I want to know more. Let's check in with Sophia and see what she can find out. Hi, Yannick. Hi, Nola. I'm here with Ryan, still trying to find out what perennials are. We've talked to a lot of people today. Let's see what they had to say. What do you think is a perennial? I think it's kind of spice. An apple? So. What do you think perennials are? Um, <laughs> um, flowers that come every year. What do you think a perennial is? I think a perennial um, could be a vitamin. What do you think a perennial is? I think a perennial is a kind of flower that comes back every season. What do you think a perennial is? A kind of seed. What do you think a perennial is? A perennial is a part of a flower. Yes, a part of a flower. Those are some interesting answers. Back to the studio. Thanks, Sophia and Ryan. Sounds like you guys had a lot of fun out there. I think I know where we can get the final say on perennials. That's right, from our good friend, Moo Cow Ninja. Moo Cow Ninja, what are perennials? Oh, that is a very, very, very good question, my friends. What is a perennial? It is pronounced perennial. Perennial. Another word I'll teach you is annual. This is pronounced an you all. A perennial means a plant that lives for two or more seasons. That means you don't have to plant seed every year. 
This includes plants like asparagus, peaches, and other fruit trees. An annual means you have to plant the seed every year. This includes most vegetable plants like cabbage, spinach, lettuce, squash, and watermelons, and many other vegetables. So, if you were a plant, you would be a perennial, not an annual. This is Moo Cow Ninja, and I'm a perennial too. Okay, we're in Professor Ricky's laboratory. It's always fun to come here, but I'm kind of smelling something. Uh, onions. Onions, that's it. Onions, it has such a strong smell. I, 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 you think he's okay? Maybe, maybe. Professor Ricky? <laughs> yes, yeah. Is this a bad time? We can come back. Oh, could be a good time. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, that's okay. I just, me and Carl have a little troubles, but okay. it's okay. All right, well, I notice you're working with onions. Yes. Does anybody have a question about onions? Mr. Ricky, I have a question. Why is it that my mom always cries like a baby when she's cutting onions? Oh. Ah. No, I hope we have an upset. Um, uh, I'll tell her, I'll tell her, I'll tell okay, her. Okay, okay. I'm fine with that. Let's go ahead. For the same reason, me and Carl were crying. The softens. Inside the onion is many softens. Comes up from the ground, gets in the onion because it's in the ground. And then when you cut it open, you have protective thing on your eye. Like yours? Like this. Oh, behind yes, it. Yes, behind okay. here. Yes. And it tries to keep it away and so it makes you cry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, is that always the case? Well, it's always the case with me. It okay. always makes me cry. All right. Now How what do you get? You? Is yeah, it always the case? Most of the time they do water a little bit. Yes. What do you got the apple for? Well, we're going to try experiment. Okay. Okay. So I hear that you be able to take onion put under your nose. Uh -huh. No, don't put it in your mouth. Put it under your nose and bite an apple. Okay. And you will taste an onion. Oh, really? Yes, that's but, what they say. But you're putting this in your mouth. Yes. And so the, the smell... They the, say the smell factory is so strong... Smell factory? Smell factory huh. in your nose is I've so strong that it will replace the taste okay. of an onion with the apple. Okay, so put the onion under... Under my nose. Under, Let's cut small under your so nose. it will fit. This okay. would fit your nose, but my nose okay. a little. Okay. okay, so like this. Hold this under okay. my nose. Uh, under your nose. Get one of the children to do it. Hey, it's hey, okay. You do that? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's do this. I'll nose. just move out of the way. Okay. I'll get a good whip. Take a bite of that. Mm. This is the weirdest thing I've ever had. Oh, yeah. This is not good. It tastes like onion. Does it? Yes, a little bit. Back and forth. Onion, apple, not good. No, let's do it the other way around. Okay. Other way around. Yes, okay. Now you stick. hold this on their nose, ready? Okay. Again, we're just gonna get everything. That's a delicious apple. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, but you ate the around. onion. What? You ate the no. onion. Yeah. No. Oh. No. I'm way. sorry. Wait. Oh. But it tastes like delicious apple. Now that is just really weird. Why is that? I don't, uh, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. I have to experiment and okay. find out. And that's what you're working on yes, right yes, now. Yes, 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 that's correct. All right, so that's what you can do. If you want to go home, get an get an onion and an apple and stick, and stick this under your nose and then take a bite of the apple, then reverse it and see what different taste you get. Because you have the senses of the taste on your tongue, but... How does it override in your nose? That's pretty cool. You guys want to try that? All right, you guys try that at home. All right, we're gonna have some snack action. Are you guys ready for that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you get home from school, what's the first thing you want to do? Get a snack. Get, get a snack. snack. Yeah. But you don't want to bother anybody, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you how you can make your own snack. Just really good stuff, fresh stuff, stuff we got from the garden. Now I'm gonna start with something really simple. Here I have two tortillas. You guys know what those are. Yeah. Now if you can get the bigger ones, the 12 inches, these are 10 inch. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lightly spread over the tortilla some cream cheese. That looks good. Now you could get flavored cream cheese if you want or something like that, but we're just gonna get the regular cream cheese, whatever your family has. All right. Now, we're gonna take just a little bit of the, the lettuce and kind of line it up, get some different kinds in there. 
line it up like that because what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to roll it so it's all right for it to be a little bit out of line. Some of our radishes just for a little, a little bit of a bite and then we have some shredded zucchini. Now I use the shredder and I just get fresh zucchini and just shred it like that. The same with the carrots. So we're going to put some of that and just kind of spread it evenly there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it looks good. And then we're going to get some carrots from the garden. Now, mm -hmm. the thing that you have to really remember to do is roll it tight. Now you don't roll this like you would a burrito. You roll it a little bit different because when you do a burrito, you tuck and roll this way. You just roll it straight like this. All right. So it's all open. It's, it's all because it's going to make a pinwheel. And that's what we're calling this a garden pinwheel. Now I have my knives here and I always ask permission to use a knife. This is a serrated knife. We use this knife for cutting bread and things like that. And then our smaller knife is our paring knife that I use to cut the vegetables and trim that. And then we have the larger carving knife that we use. When you use a knife, make sure you always pull your fingers back like that. Otherwise, you won't have any fingers left and you won't have to worry about doing that anymore. Here we go. Are you ready for this? Yep. I'm just cutting even pieces. Now, sometimes it's, it's good to put them in the refrigerator. And you can put all sorts of toppings. You can put some, some turkey or some ham or something like that. Now, okay. look at the middle of them right there. I'm just going to place it on top of this pinwheel. Isn't that cool how they look? Yeah, that is, yeah. That is pretty cool. I really, now, look, I really like that. That's a good one. Yeah. All right, then you just get you a plate and, and just snack on it. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's pretty. All right. Now, the best part is what? Eating it. All right, girls first. <laughs> Jump in there. All right, guys. Okay. Jump in there. And this is stuff we got at the farm. What do you think of that? Good. All right. We can make real simple snacks. It doesn't take much, just a little bit of time, a little bit of cleanup, and you have it fresh, fresh. Does it taste fresh? Yeah. Fresh from the garden. Can't get any better than that. Mm. Okay. Healthy. Mm -hmm. Uh, welcome to my favorite part of the garden cam. Of course, we're at the garden cam and it's exactly what it says it is. It's a camera in the garden and the camera stays there and just watches stuff grow. And I've got this okra and this is my favorite part of the garden. This is where we actually get to pick the stuff, pick what we planted. And it's real important that you pick at the right time. Like for okra, you have to, to pick every other day. And if you don't, then it gets too big. And this one is almost too big. And it gets hard and you can't use it. There's a window of opportunity for every plant that we get and everything that's planted, because you don't want it to get too big and you don't want the wildlife to get to it and you don't want the bugs to get to it. But it's a favorite part when we go out in the field and we've done everything we're supposed to do. We've We've got the right soil, we've got uh, moisture, we've got rain, sunlight, we thin the crop, and now we get the harvest. And that is the best part. I really like okra. And a lot of people won't do this, but I'll even take a bite of okra out in the field. Isn't that amazing? Anybody want some? Me, me. I'm thinking you probably don't, but it's still good. So that's from the garden cam. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Some really good stuff here, right in the garden. Mmm. Well, what a fun time we had at Guilford Gardens, wasn't it great? Yes! Yeah. Thank you, Camilla, for letting us come and well, kind of mess up your kitchen. It was a lot of fun. We enjoyed it. <laughs> now, what was your favorite part today? Going to the garden. The garden. Dipping sauce. Dipping. Those are so good, aren't they? Picking fresh vegetables. There were a bunch of them. And cooking asparagus and more importantly, eating asparagus. All right. <laughs> Next, I give me one. Mm. You want guys on one another? Mm. Mm. Cheers. This is good. Now come and see us again when we go on another Kitchen, kitchen Expedition. All right, dig in, everybody. Okay. Mm. That's right. Plant me what's now bloom with the seasons every year. Some of my friends are annual, so they're cheap and take less care. But if the weather's not just right, too hot or cold, some of my annual friends just give up and die, and aren't really that bold. That's 